everyone welcome to my youtube channel i'm sakshi kaushik so today we are going to study about class 6th history yes you heard me right so this is going to be helpful for class 6 students to revise their history lessons as well as for any of you who are preparing for any kind of competitive examination that requires you to remember and recall your social studies that you did in your 6th standard so this is the book so that you get a glimpse of what we are going to study this is the book of class 6th history our past 1 so we are going to study chapter number 1 that is what where and when so let us get started with this chapter yes so first of all, we are going to address to a very, very important question that is what, where and when. That is the title of our chapter. So the question that we are going to address in this chapter is what exactly can we know about our past? So what are the things that we need to know about the past? So the very first question, I believe that you all must be having your notebooks and your pens ready and handy so that you can take down the notes so number one question that we want to address in this particular chapter is what to know about past so what are the things that we can understand about past the number one thing that we can understand about our past is the way people lived okay the basic necessities of the people the the type of food they ate the type of houses they lived in or whether they survived in forest without any kind of shelter okay the second thing that we can know about the past is the occupation that those people were involved in whether they were hunters they were gatherers or they were skilled artisans they were potters or they were farmers what type of occupation they were having and the third thing that we can know about the past is the basic activities now basic activities say i mean is that what type of basic things they used to do in their free time for example what type of games the children used to play in past did they play the same games as we are playing nowadays on android like pubg and all or what so that is what we are going to look in the past so the questions that we can address number one thing is the occupation number two thing is the daily activities that they did in their free time and number three things is that the basic necessities of life what were the type of houses they were living in or the food they had or the clothing they used to wear or the houses right so these are the basic things that we can know about our past and that is why we are really interested in studying our past so let us first begin with the last thing that we have written down over here that is the basic necessities and within this we'll begin with houses so what are we going to deal in this is we are going to study about the type of habitat the people lived in so we will be beginning with a series and i'll be creating a flow chart that would be really informative and necessary so the people started their you know living or their houses in the narmada river not in the narmada river actually besides the coast of the narmada river so the very first habitat that developed was in the coast of the narmada river and near the areas of narmada river so the very first houses what are we studying about we are studying about the habitat what do we mean by habitat by the way habitat means where did people live places of living okay so places of living we will start with our number one place of living that is narmada river so i have jotted this down narmada river because people they started residing in this 
uh, outskirts of Narmada river and what they, they did was the basic occupation at that point of time was of hunters and gatherers so near the Narmada river there were a lot of forest areas there were a lot, a lot of tree areas so the people who resided over here they were usually either the hunters or they were the gatherers and there was nothing like ownership what i mean by that is there was nothing like this particular land belonged to a particular tribe or a group and the other part of the land belonged to another tribe it was not like present day situations everything belonged to everyone over there and everyone shared their outcomes whatever they hunted whatever they gathered they shared it with their fellow mates so in narmada river the first time living started and the basic occupation was of hunting and gathering hunting and gathering was the, was the basic occupation now we move on to the second one the second place where people started to reside as they increased in population was the kirthar hills they started to live in the kirthar hills and in the kirthar hills for the first time crop production began and the crop that the people used to grow was mainly barley and wheat and a major significant change was that both men and women were equally included and involved in the production of crops in the kirthar hills region now kirthar hills are towards the northwest areas okay towards the northwest areas we are having kirthar hills and what started was crop production began crop production and what type of crops did they grow they grew barley and wheat these were the major crops that they grew at that point of time an important point to note is that both men and women did this job okay so both of them were equally involved in this job now we'll move on to the third part of the habitat and the third part of the habitat is the garo hills people also started to occupy the regions of garo hills and garo hills was the place where agriculture officially started here the crop production began but official agriculture began in garo hills where agriculture was taken as a major occupation by many of its inhabitants so agriculture began and what did they do what did they cultivate their main cultivation crop was rice yes so that's an interesting thing the main cultivation crop was rice in garo hills where agriculture officially exactly began okay so just a quick recap then we'll go on to the next habitat the first thing started the first living started in the narmada river where basic occupation of people was hunting and gathering second was in kirthar hills that is situated towards the northwest parts their crop production began where the main crops that were produced were barley and wheat both men and women were equally involved in the crop production then the third habitat is of the garo hills where agriculture officially developed and rice was the main produce over there and if we talk about the fourth one let me wrap this off and then we'll talk about the fourth one okay so after garo hills people started to occupy the region of indus river and the territories of indus river so the fourth one was indus and territories either you can call it as territories or you can call it as tributaries now do you know the difference between a river and a tributary okay that's really interesting the difference between a river and tributary that would be important at this point of time when we talk about the indus it's a river and it has many tributaries tributaries are basically small streams of water that ultimately join into the river and river is a larger area of water for example this is a river in actual it's much better so my drawing is not that good 
so this is your river let's call it as indus okay this is our river and there are certain tributaries which are coming from somewhere from the mountains which are coming from different directions and different sources but ultimately they come and drop their water into the river indus so the small streams of water would be the tributaries and the larger area of water would be the river so the fourth place of habitat was indus and the tributaries of the river indus now what was the occupation of the people over here the basic change that is to be noticed is that from the villages now what developed was the cities in the indus region the cities developed so this was the first time when people of india started to live in places called cities and this was about 4700 years ago okay it was 4700 years ago when people started to live and reside in cities so this is a distinguishing characteristic of this state of habitat now the fifth and the last state of habitat is ganga and its tributary and tributary and here the name of the tributary has also been specifically given which is sun s o n okay so this is the name of a tributary and not the actual sun that we would be thinking about in case of english so the fifth habitat is ganga and its tributaries right so what happened over here again the cities flourished in this place okay cities developed even more and this time when we are talking about is 2400 years ago so the first time when cities developed were 4700 years ago and when cities modernized it was 2400 years ago and in ganga there was a very large and a powerful kingdom that developed and the name of that kingdom was magadh so many of you who must be watching certain you know historical shows must be aware of this place that was a powerful kingdom not just powerful powerful and a large kingdom okay so magadh was the powerful and large kingdom that was situated near ganga and magadh if we talk about where is the present day uh, area or territory of magadh it is in bihar so the present day territory is bihar okay because at that time we had not distinguished the places as you know bihar or chatisgarh or these things so now present day it would be called as the area bihar so these are the talkings about the habitat the basic places where the people lived <coughs> now the next thing that we are going to talk about is why did people travel so if you have read something in your history books at some point of time or heard from your parents at any point of time about history you must be fascinated to know that people used to travel a lot at that point of time a lot so what were the basic reasons of people traveling so there are five basic reasons of why people traveled so here we go with the question i hope all of you are also jotting it down in your notebooks of why people traveled the uh, very first reason of why people traveled was in the search of livelihood that's the basic reason they were searching for a proper house a proper place place to live so in search of livelihood or in order to avoid the natural disasters or the natural calamities people traveled so the number one reason people traveled in search of livelihood okay so people traveled in search of livelihood or to avoid the natural calamities the second reason of why people traveled were certain men belonging to the army traveled in order to conquer the land of other people okay so the army people had a different reason to travel they were traveling so that they can capture any other land and increase their property so army men traveled to capture land now the third reason of why people traveled is for the merchants 
merchants are those who basically believe or do the business of exchanging goods the trading system that we call okay so merchants used to travel in order to you know transfer goods from one place to another so merchants ka reason of traveling was to transfer goods merchants traveled to transfer the goods okay so i am not writing the full sentences they travel to transfer goods from one place to another place that's the reason they traveled the fourth traveling was of the teachers or the disciples basically they traveled in order to share their knowledge and give advice to everyone whom they met during traveling so the teachers or the gurus traveled to give advice okay kisko advice dete the they used to give advice to anyone whom they uh, met during their traveling time and the fifth and the most interesting reason of all that you will find out is that some people travel just because they love to travel just because they liked exploring new places and new areas so some people were there who some traveled to explore okay so there were many of the people who travel to just explore the areas so these are the basic five reasons so why people used to travel some were in search of livelihood army men wanted to capture others lands merchants wanted to you know transfer their goods from one place to another the teachers wanted to travel to share their knowledge and provide advice and some travels because they love to in order to explore new areas and new places okay so i hope you all are understanding very well till now what all we have covered is we have covered that what can we know about past what were the habitats of those people and what are the reasons of which because of which people travel now we are going to address to a very important question and that question is what is the name of the land okay what is the name of the land land our land ki jo naam india hai or the name bharat how did it come into existence okay name of land theek <coughs> hai so the name india how did it come into existence you are going to know today to so india jo name hai it has been actually derived from a greek word that is known as indus okay i'll use a different color pen india name has been derived from a greek word derive uh, that is indus okay india no, derived from a greek word indus and in sanskrit this indus word is known as sindhu sindhu so sindhu is the word in sanskrit okay and indus is the word in greek so basic origin of this term india was from this greek word indus and indus in sanskrit is known as sindhu so this is just for your information that indus in sanskrit is known as sindhu otherwise the this india has been derived from indus and the second one is bharat okay india is also referred to as bharat and how did this come into existence a bharat kaise existence mein aaya see the people who used to live in the northwest areas northwest areas kaun si ho gaye we have just studied the kirthar hills kirthar hills were of northwest areas so people who used to live in the northwest areas in the old era they were referred as bharata b h a r a t a so they were referred as bharata and thus in today's world or few years later as well we started calling that land as bharat okay this is how the word bharat came into existence so people of northwest were known as bharata were called as bharata in the old era of times and eventually what we saw was that the land came to be known as bharat instead of people so this is how these two words have their origin and our land has its name india or bharat 
right now the next topic that we are going to study is really interesting topic and that interesting topic is see you should also be having a question in your mind that i have discussed so much about the past that we can know this about past in past people used to live here why is india called the way india why is bharat called the way bharat but you should ask that how can we come to know about the past how do these history book writers know what exactly happened in the past so now we are going to study the ways in which we can know about our past so methods of knowing past okay what are the methods of knowing past in all there are four methods number one method is manuscripts you all must have heard about manuscripts so manuscripts are basically written books okay they are handwritten books old books usually written on palm leaves so i'll write the characteristics and you would understand it in a better way number one way is through the manuscripts m a n u s c r i p t is the spelling of manuscript number one quality is that they are hand written and this is the biggest quality in today's world just imagine that a book of this thickness is hand written you would die of writing it right so manuscripts were hand written of course they are old books because we are referring to past so they are much much older books they deal with all subjects now deal with all subjects mean that of the past everything is written whatever happened in the past the cultural events or the studious events or the fights wars everything is present in these manuscripts and what are they written on hand written hai old book hai okay but what are they written on they are written on palm leaves either they are written on palm leaves or they are written on the bark of a tree and bark of tree known as birch b i r c h so either they were written on palm leaves or they were written on the bark of trees but if you think they were written on palm leaves pa leaves are can be easily destroyed and can be easily demolished so one of the disadvantages of manuscript was that many of the manuscripts have been destroyed and eaten away by the insects though we have a lot of them still persisting and being saved securely but many of them have been eaten away by the insects so there is a dis advantage that is many destroyed see many manuscripts okay many manuscripts destroyed by insects this is one of the disadvantages of manuscripts so one way by which we can find out about the past manuscript they are handwritten they are old books written on palm leaves or the uh, bark of a tree which is known as birch then they deal with all the kinds of subjects all the type they cover all types of topics that were there disadvantages many of them have been destroyed by our dear insects okay and the second method is inscriptions after manuscripts we have inscriptions so inscriptions are also old past ki writings they are also writings but the difference in this writing is that inscriptions are the writings which are on a relatively harder surface so palm leaves kya thi wo soft thi so they got destroyed easily but inscriptions pe then they focus that okay the leaves are getting destroyed so we must uh, write down our records or save our records on something that is hard so hard like stone so inscriptions were hand written hand written on a surface that was stronger for example stones so hand written on harder surfaces like stones so they were 
on harder surfaces like the stones and an advantage of inscriptions would be that they cannot be destroyed easily because they are present on harder surfaces now the third method of knowing our past is through the archaeologists now who are the archaeologists archaeologists are those people who are interested in studying about the objects that were used in past or that were made in past so the people in the occupation of studying about objects that were used or made in past are known as archaeologists and we also derive a lot and lots of information about our past through the archaeologists and the findings of archaeologists are known as archives okay so people who study past things or in a better way things of past things made in past or used in past okay like our old monuments old monuments are there so these archaeologists would dig into them and they would study those old monuments they would find out certain new findings and the findings of archaeologists are known as archives okay their findings are known as archives findings of archaeologists known as archives and after that we are left with the fourth one the fourth method by which we can know about a past is through the historians okay historians also provide a whole lot of information about past and historians are basically the scholars who study about past and what they do is they are very smart people smart in the sense that whatever findings they get they call it as source okay like the findings of archaeologists were known as archives the findings of historians are known as source and they uh, you know derive their findings from the findings of archaeologists or from manuscripts or from inscriptions so they are not actually digging deep into it what they are doing is they are taking the materials which have already been brought and they are you know developing more on to that material and dealing with things that okay this is the material from which region it could have been and what is the significance of a particular symbol that is probably made on a coin so this is what historians do they study past they study past okay their findings are called source okay they call their findings as source and findings wo apni kahan kahan se nikalte hain they make their findings from manuscripts from the inscriptions and they make their findings from the archaeologist ka findings so historians are pretty smart people okay now the next question that i have to address is so no need to write it down i can just speak over it that is one past or many past okay so interested in this question this question basically means that we are we having just one past all of us do we have the same past or are we having different pasts okay that's the question that has to be addressed too so what do you think think for a moment till then i rub it off one past or many pasts okay so i think you all must have thought upon this question past one or many right one or many so let's see some people would arrive to the decision that by hum sab we are all humans so naturally we would be having only one past but no that's not right what exactly is the thing is we are having many pasts many past in the sense the past that would be for a farmer or a hunter or a gatherer would be different and the past life of a king would be different so we will be doing a comparative study we have a farmer over here and we have a king okay a farmer and a king is what we'll deal with so the lifestyle of a farmer the food a farmer ate 
and the occupation of a farmer similar things goes for the king the lifestyle the food and the occupation would they be same would the lifestyle a farmer would have uh, been in that past century would it be same as the lifestyle of the king or maybe the food that the farmer ate the quantity would it be same as that of the king or the occupation is it same of course not the occupation to visibly hai. occupation is not same he is a farmer he is a slave he is the king he is the master of that particular region so of course a farmer would be having a different historical background a different past and the king would be having a different historical background and a different past therefore we say that past are many depending upon the different types of cultural groups we have and the different types of occupations we have now the last but not the least topic that is left and then this chapter would be over is the dates okay how did the people of the past refer to the dates and what do the dates actually mean okay what do dates of past mean okay what do the dates of past mean so we are having two dates number 1 you all must have heard about it b and c b c number 2 is a and d a d these are the two dates b c basically refers to before christ and a d is after christ so ad is not having that letter wala full form as you must be thinking for bc it's after christ okay after christ or some people also call it as in the era of christ after or in era of christ so bc that is before christ is referred to as that time period that was before the origin of christ and ad is referred to as that time period that is during the era of christ or after the or that time that would be after the era of christ now bc is sometimes also referred to as bce similarly ad is also sometimes referred to as ce now what is the full form of ce the full form of ce is common era okay common era and the full form of bce would be you just add a before to it before common era so before ce so these are what do the dates mean bc is before christ also known as bce that is before the common era ad is after christ or during the era of christ also known as ce that is the common era the era that is going on right now right so this was the last topic that we had to cover in this particular chapter and congratulations so finally this chapter study is over and i hope you all understood the uh, chapter what when and where of class 6th history chapter number 1 so this was it for today's video and please leave your comments in the comment section below and give your reviews about this method of teaching are you comfortable with it or do you want to change or what else are the topics that you want me to make a video on so thank you so much for watching my video and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet click on the like button if you like my efforts and yes hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as i put any new video do share it with your friends so that they can also get the benefit of these videos thank you and bye bye